Hi everyone, it's Chris again, coming at y'all with another movie review. Uh, I've gotten over my Transformers The Last Night Depression from the last few weeks, and uh, now I'm going to talk about another movie, and that movie is Spider-Man Homecoming, the brand new Spider-Man movie. Uh, this new incarnation of Spider-Man's solo film debut following his spectacular debut in Captain America Civil War. Um, for me, Spider-Man, when I, when I first got into really the whole superhero lore, it was around 2007, and Spider-Man was really the first hero I really latched onto. I just loved his stories. I loved his villains. I loved how relatable he was. And I really, my whole childhood and teenage life, I got into the Spider-Man video games cartoons, all that good stuff. And in retrospect, looking at it now, I think a lot of people have really been waiting for them to get Spider-Man completely right on the big screen. I mean, the Raimi movies, I think the first two, even though they're not, uh, they don't deliver on everything you want from a Spider-Man movie, I think the first two Raimi films are still great, especially the second one. I love that one. Third one, not so much. And unfortunately, those uh, last few Andrew Garfield movies, really just didn't do it for me. All those movies really had going for them was the chemistry between Peter and Gwen Stacy. But really, everything else I thought kind of sucked, to be honest. But now, I think uh, me, like a lot of people, got really excited when the news came that Spider-Man was going to be coming into the MCU, and he was so great in Civil War that I thought everyone was going to be looking forward to this movie. And for me, this with this partnership of uh, Marvel and Sony coming together, uh, they really made my spider dreams come true with this movie because really I think that this movie just hit a home run when it came to getting Spider-Man right. And I think what makes this movie so so much fun, really as just a just a movie itself and as a Spider-Man movie, is that it just feels so fresh. Mainly because they deliver on spot on uh, what you what a lot, I think a lot of people want to see from from Spider-Man himself, just because. Really, none of the previous five Spider-Man movies, I guess before this, have really captured the great things I'd want to see in a Spider-Man movie. And this film really does it, because here, it's set in high school, we get a young Peter Parker, it helps that it's set in the MCU, and it's just a super fun vibe to this movie. I really think that uh, setting it in the high school, I just think that's where Spider-Man works the best, because that's when you can get some really good stories about responsibility, growing up, power, all that stuff. And it's just so much fun to watch. And the whole high school dynamic of this movie just makes it feel just so fresh and so much fun. And just the vibe that they had going for it was just the perfect decision on how to approach these uh, new line of Spider-Man movies. And obviously Spider-Man, we saw in Captain America Civil War, uh, Tom Holland, man. This guy is, I, I just think, the perfect Spider-Man. Greatest Peter Parker and greatest Spider-Man which is a really great thing to do because I don't think neither Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield, while well, good, good actors and they, they were good in those movies for the most part, neither were the perfect Spider-Man or Peter Parker. But I think this movie, Tom Holland, he's just a great all-around Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And all the other characters have done really well, too. Just the whole vibe they have going with all his friends in high school, like Ned, uh, Liz Allen, and all that stuff. I think that stuff works out really well. But talking about the main other players in the movie, first let's talk about the, the Vulture, played by Michael Keaton. And I thought, uh, before, b before word, the stuff I heard about this movie before seeing it was that the Vulture was sort of underwhelming. And following the movie, I don't agree with Vulture, that at all. Man. I thought he was a pretty damn good villain. Very entertaining. I thought Keaton just killed the role in terms of how he portrayed it. He's a lot of fun to watch. I thought they added some good dynamics to the character and sort of seeing why he's doing the things he did. And I thought he was just a pretty better than probably 90% of the MCU villains that they've had so far. So Vulture was definitely good for me. And something that really surprised me was how well Tony Stark was used. I thought that a lot of the trailers were sort of overdoing it on Tony Stark himself. I mean, we obviously love Robert Downey Jr. in these movies, but this is a Spider-Man movie. And it felt like the trailers were selling the movie a bit too much on Iron Man. But this movie, I thought, made just perfect use of Tony Stark, man. He's in it just enough. I love the role that he plays. 
him and Peter have some really, really nice scenes together. Robert Downey Jr., of course, he's always great as Tony Stark, so that's not really a question or a doubt going in. But just what Tony Stark brought to this movie, I thought was really well done, and I was really impressed on how they used him in this movie. Just don't do anything stupid. And the movie ends up, for the most part, delivering pretty damn well on all the stuff you want from a superhero film or just a blockbuster in general. The action's pretty fun, it's quick paced, the special effects are good, climax is a lot of fun, so ultimately, great as a blockbuster, just great as someone who really wanted to see Spider-Man done right, and it's so great him being in the MCU now, and they really make good use of that in this movie, just a bunch of little uh, MCU teases here and there, obviously Tony Stark, but also some other, cameo other cameos like uh, the stuff that we've seen from those Captain America videos in the trailer. That's a lot of fun. That's great. So it's great having Spider-Man in the MCU. It just made for a really fun film for me overall. So I'm going to end up giving the movie a 9 out of 10. Uh, really, I think this is probably my favorite movie of the summer. Uh, probably not of the year overall, but for the summer, I just thought this movie was just so much fun. And just, just so, just such a feel-good movie. Uh, so I ended up edging out Wonder Woman for me, which Wonder Woman, as you saw in my review, I thought Wonder Woman was great for most of it, but kind of uh, disappointed a little bit at the end. But this movie, I constantly, I just thought it was on point. I really ended up having not a whole bunch of flaws at all, um, or any flaws, to be honest. Really, my one nitpick might be just I think this movie does go... This isn't a problem with the movie, just something relating it to the comics is that this movie sort of goes a little bit overboard on the sort of what I like to call color washing. I mean, I'm someone who does like to see this stuff uh, portrayed how it is in the comics in terms of look and whatnot. I don't mind color washing for certain characters, but this movie is like, oh my god, they changed just a whole bunch of stuff from uh, Spider-Man character lore, including one major change that I that I'm not going to spoil, but I just wasn't really crazy about it, but it's interesting to see in the direction that it goes. So those were really my only problem with the movie right there. But overall, as a Spider-Man movie, I just had so much fun with this one. And in terms of, uh, so really, I give more, most of the credit to Marvel Studios with this movie, just because of how badly Sony screwed up those last couple Spider-Man movies. I just really felt it was the MCU touch that made this movie really special. And it, it's going to be interesting to see where Sony goes with Spider-Man from here, just because I think they've got uh, a really interesting plan about trying to do a separate um, sort of Spider-Man universe. I mean, Tom Hardy is Venom. That could be kind of cool. But they also got some weird stuff like a black cat and Silver Sable spin off. So not really too sure about that. But just speaking about Spider-Man Homecoming itself, great movie. Like I said, 9 out of 10. And that's so much fun with this new perfect incarnation of Spider-Man. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Spider-Man Homecoming. Hope y'all enjoyed this review. Leave your comments and thoughts if you've seen the movie, and I will see y'all around with another video.